So we weren't planning on doing this video, but Principal Technologies came back with new test results with the Ryzen 2700X tested mostly, well, better this time. They used creator mode instead of game mode. And it, game mode, despite its naming, is really meant more for Threadripper, and that's to disable a bunch of cores that games don't know what the heck to do with. But in the 2700X, you don't have that problem. So it should be left stock unmodified by the user, which would be called creator mode. They posted new results. We're going to go through those today. It looks a lot different than it did originally. The 60% differences between the 2700X and the 9900K suddenly disappear. So that's important to go through. And then Intel also gave us a statement which just came in like minutes ago that we'll be reading. And it is, well, it's, it's something else. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Thermaltake Level 20 VT Micro ATX case. The Level 20 VT takes the high quality Level 20 design and makes it more affordable and shrinks it down to a micro ATX form factor at that. With fully modular paneling, it's possible to rearrange this case into whatever configuration you prefer. For a micro ATX case that can be a discussion piece in a home theater system, click the link in the description below. So quick recap, very quick one. We went over to the Principal Technologies offices, we had an interview with them, we went through their testing methods, and why we thought there were problems in those methods. They recorded the conversation, they took the recording, and they theoretically looked at some of it when redoing their tests, and they did redo a bunch of tests. If you don't know what came before that, the answer is that Principal Technologies and Intel jointly released a third-party test document conducted by Principal Technologies consisting of 19 games for the 9900K, the 9980XE, and some other Intel processors. This is functionally a review. The difference is that Principal Technologies is not under review embargo, like we are. So we can't come out and validate them or invalidate the results. That's a problem. The next part, Principal Technologies is a third party paid by Intel. So this is actually OK. We're OK with paying a third party test house to do validation. The problem that we actually have is that the third party test house is the only one permitted to release testing information. And so consumers are left with a document which is full of what we very, well, let's tone it down a bit, thought, thought the testing was flawed. We disagreed with it vehemently. And that's why we went to their offices and talked to them about it. So despite the, <laughs> despite being greeted at the door by one of the, the co-founders, Mark, at Principal Technologies, who said, we disagree with you, uh, the reality is that their new results showed that we were actually right, as was Steve from Hardware Unboxed and others who were involved in this. So let me read Intel's response first. I, I want to first say this. Principal Technologies has really done a lot to earn a little bit of trust towards them trying to do something a bit better. It's Intel that I now have a problem with more so than PT, although PT, of course, we do ultimately think that their initial testing was very misleading, whether they intended it to be or not. So Intel released this extremely conceited statement. Intel said, given the feedback from the tech community, we are pleased that Principled Technologies ran additional tests. They've now published these results along with even more detail in the configurations used and the rationale. The results continue to show that the 9th gen Core i9-9900K is the world's best gaming processor. We are thankful for Principled Technologies' time and transparency throughout this process. We always appreciate feedback from the tech community and are looking forward to comprehensive third-party reviews coming out on October 19th. And this is following a previous statement where Intel said they were excited to see third-party reviewers show that the 9900K is the best processor in the world ever made ever. So here's the thing. No one, I don't think anyone said that the 9900K wouldn't be a chart topper. In fact, in our interview with PT, I was establishing with them, look, I don't disagree Gamers Nexus, we don't disagree that the 9900K is probably going to be the best on the chart. What we disagree with is the degree to which it is the best. Because here's the thing, if you're already in the lead, why do you have to cheat? Why do you have to throw caltrops at the guy behind you and trip him up? There's no point. You're already winning. So, the f and this isn't necessarily using the word cheat here. If Principal Technologies really thought that game mode was the right thing to do, and I'm OK with taking them at their word for that. Bill didn't necessarily seem like he knew any better, and they don't seem like they test a lot of gaming parts, and I didn't talk to their technicians. So if we all take them at their word for that, we have to then look at Intel, who came out and said, we validated PT's results, and they were accurate. Intel knows better. Intel knows exactly what game mode does. 
So Intel, why, why do you need this level of deception and then the bullshit coming after it where you say, oh, well, we're still the best. So we, we have a big problem with the way Intel handled all of this because Intel comes out acting smug about the results saying that they're still the best. And again, no one said Intel wasn't the best. The word best, however, in this context can be an awful, awful word because best technically, extremely objectively and looking only at the FPS numbers, yeah, Intel chart tops here and therefore you could say they are the best insofar as their results for these games. However, Intel isn't necessarily the best insofar as its value proposition or in perhaps production performance or maybe in other specific application performance, maybe in power, maybe in thermals. We don't know. We haven't tested it yet. So to say just outright best isn't really fair. We will give Intel that they're at the top of the charts. So for these gaming results, as we said in our previous video, as we said in the interview with PC World with Gordon, yeah, Intel technically is the best and tactical victory isn't always the best victory because there are a lot of other factors to consider that's where third-party reviews will come in but the statement by intel was extremely conceited they didn't miss the point either intel knows damn well what the problem was but intel is speaking to its shareholders and they're putting out a statement that will please its shareholders so anyway let's go through pt's results we're just going to read through them through the new tests, we're not going to cross-validate. It's not really the point here. The point is, how did the results change after that discussion? And this is primarily with the change of game mode versus creator mode. We're not really talking about any of the rest of the issues that we brought up during that interview. So let's jump around in the results a bit to show what the differences are between game mode and creator mode. We already pretty much knew all these differences from our own testing ages ago, but it's good to revisit them with principal technologies testing. Total War Warhammer 2 really doesn't show that much of a difference, which isn't a surprise. We see a difference of actually a, a bit of a deficit in creator mode. They're more or less equal within reasonable margins, depending on how tight this testing methodology is. So not a huge change here for the 2700X. Of course, the 2990WX shows a much better result in game mode, but that is in fact why game mode was created. It wasn't made for the 2700X. It was made for the 2990WX and CPU is similar to that, like in the Threadripper family. So this shows why that exists. But if we move on to something else, we can see there are a couple games, Global Offensive, another example. These, of course, are listed at the very top of the document where you see the least change. And these, this one also shows functionally zero difference for the 2700X. However, as we start to move through the document, you'll see in Gears of War 4, the 2700X in game mode is, and this is the original result, so despite Andy's sort of misnomer, game mode is actually worse for the Ryzen 7 family CPUs. You see 129 FPS, and by the metric that uh, per principal technologies uses, you'll see a 46-ish percent performance advantage, they call it, for the 9900K. And we have another issue with this, but that's neither here nor there. Actually, it's exactly here. The issue is that FPS scales non-linearly, and so the gap will look bigger as you increase in uh, in frame rate distance, but in reality, as the frame rate is higher, the frame time dis difference is less significant. I mean, you're talking a couple milliseconds max, maybe even one millisecond once you start getting up to the, the really high frame rate. So it's, it's not really the best metric. But anyway, 2700X is 129 FPS average in game mode. Creator mode, the new test, the retest is 151.5 FPS average. And that is a, uh, it changes using their metric only from 46% advantage 900K to 25%. Pretty damn big difference. And the next one, Gears of War uh, 4, there's some more information here for that, but War Thunder is another game where we see actually a bit of a deficit in creator mode. This comes down to things like latency, stuff like that, but we also don't know if their testing's good here. We haven't tested War Thunder, can't validate it, and we're just looking at their data today. Ashes of the Singularity, this was the gigantic red flag for everyone. 2700X originally posted a 36 FPS, 35.5 FPS average for a performance advantage in the 900K of 57.2%. Almost 60% better, allegedly, for the 9900K. That's a pretty damn big difference. But if we look at creator mode, it's 47 FPS average, dropping the gap from the performance advantage metric that they use from 57.2% to 17.7%. Pretty damning in the original results and looking much more respectable in the follow-up, especially considering, again, the price difference. And well, we'll talk about this more later, but Intel doesn't need to fudge the numbers here. They're already the best. 
insofar as just pure FPS numbers. So why cheat? And then Forza Motorsport is next. This one, 2700X game mode, 151 FPS average. Creator mode, 178 FPS average. Dropping the distance from a 35% quote performance advantage, end quote, to a 14.2% performance advantage, in quotes. Assassin's Creed Origins. We see a score of 84 FPS average for the 2700X in game mode and 106 FPS average in creator mode, dropping us from 42% quote performance advantage to 12%. Far Cry 5, up next. This one doesn't show a massive difference, but it does show a difference. You go from 103 FPS average to 113 by their testing methodology. We'll skip through some of the other games here because a lot of these, just to quickly go through them, I guess, World of Warcraft, mostly the same results. Civilization 6, not particularly exciting results, although still improved in creator mode. Fortnite moves from 140 to 148 FPS average, so that changes the performance advantage from 23% to 16%. World of Tanks goes from, it's actually not really much different in their testing methodology. Rainbow Six Siege, bit of a difference. It's 263 FPS average in game mode versus 280 in creator mode, moving from 17-ish percent to 11-ish percent in the performance advantage metric that they use. PUBG, we go from 191 to 204. Uh, Tomb Raider, 170 to 172, not really a change there. Shadow of War goes from 140 to 143, not a big change there either. And some of these games uh, show bigger changes than others, some really not that exciting. So that's it. That's it for the quick recap. Again, this video is completely unanticipated. We had other videos scheduled to go up at the time. This one will be going up, so we'll throw it together for you. It's a really important news announcement. We wanted to make it standalone, even though we could have shoved it into a news video in a week. But we want it to go up now, because it's important and relevant now. So significant difference between the 2700X results and the 9900K results as originally conducted, as everyone in our audience expected. And Again, huge props to Principal Technologies for accepting an interview with us, for being very transparent in this whole process, and uh, presumably trying to do the right thing here. But Intel really has, has lost some favor in the tech community with this one, and it's unfortunate. Because the 9900K, the 9980XE, and the 3175, that whole launch event, was well received by the press. And that's rare. It's rare for a launch event to go over that well. Most launch events, AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel, uh, result in, in a lot of bickering and complaints about how, un how disorganized the launch event was. So Intel had this momentum. And they did things people wanted. They added solder. And then they just, just obliterated all of that goodwill. They just lit a match and watched it burn to post results from another company, PT, whom they paid with incorrect testing that created differences that looked as big as 60%, I'll remind you, and then uh, still come out after it's been changed from like 60% improvement to 17 and say, well, we're still the best. So there's nothing more we can say here that we haven't already said. That's it for this one. Uh, this video, again, wasn't expected, but important information to have. Sound off in the comments. We're still, still pretty, pretty unhappy with the way Intel handled this. To put it lightly, the processor itself may be completely fine. But Intel is souring the launch with with just gimmickry and stupid childish games that are completely based in total bullshit. So anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's what we're dealing with for this one. So anyways, as always, store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus if you'd like to pick up uh, our Patreon tiers that give you access to Discord and things like that. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.